What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. I've got a customer's BC here. Uh, I'm going to be taking the inflator off and doing a little bit of servicing. He said he's had a little trouble out of it. Um, and I can tell just right away there is a ton of corrosion um, around the inflator itself here. And I have no doubt there's plenty of corrosion on the inside, the, the spring mechanism where you got your power inflator. I have no doubt there's going to be corrosion in there too. Uh, and this customer actually takes very good care of his gear. Um, one of the issues he has, though, is he owns a house down in the tropics. And so most of this gear stays down in the tropics. So it's constantly getting salt water buildup on it or salt crystals built up. And even though we tell you to use fresh, clean water to wash your gear, sometimes that's not enough. You still got to get in there and scrub. Um, but this gear is just completely saturated with salt water pretty much year round. Um, this is his backup BCD, so he, he does have another primary BCD that he can use while we're servicing it. But I also want to kind of add into this video as well that if you're only a summertime diver, meaning you only dive when it's warm out, you store your gear all winter and then you get it back out during the springtime, the best time to service your gear is right now when it's cold outside, when you're not going to be diving. And the reason is, is because we get complacent as human beings. We forget about things. And if we put our gear up and, and let's say it needs service, let's say you've got an inflator like this, it's just not working well. If you put it up, you'll probably be planning your summertime trips throughout the winter and you'll forget about your gear. Maybe you put it in your closet or wherever you store it. And then come summertime or springtime when you fix to go on your trip, you're going to pull your gear out, throw it in your box or your bag, whatever you travel with, and you're going to go on your trip. But you forgot to service it. So right now is actually the best time to do servicing. Bring them in in the wintertime. Shops are slow, so they got all the time in the world to work on it. And that usually means you'll get it back quicker. But now is a great time to bring it in because you don't want to forget about it when it comes time to go dive. You want to just be able to pull it out, test it real quick, and then, of course, go dive. So I'm going to cut off the zip tie here really quick. And uh, I'm going to show you his inflator. And I want to show you the uh, corrosion that's on it here. And I'm actually going to show you, too, how we service it. And I don't know if the camera will focus here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. You start to see some of the corrosion build up on there. And if it's built up on the outside, I have no doubt that it's also going to be built up on the inside. There's a spring mechanism in here that when you press down on your inflator, that spring compresses when you let go and, and so forth and so on. And so I have no doubt that that mechanism in there is not working properly as well. Um, not only am I going to clean this for the customer, I'm also going to rebuild it as well. There's actually on this Ergo inflator, there's another spring system that we check too. It's this one right here. And so I'll be cleaning that. And the way I clean these is very simple. This is something that you can do at home. You don't have to come to a service technician for this. But we take pretty much any metal parts, we put it into an ultrasonic cleaner. And a lot of people have been asking, you know, what do you use to clean? Well, mine's a 50-50 blend of water and distilled white vinegar. And I just put a 50-50 blend. Usually, I'll just use a bottle of water. And then I'll fill the bottle of water up with vinegar and pour it in as well. And that will usually give me the right mixture. And of course, any metal parts will actually go in there. And that's what we use to clean any metal parts of our scuba systems. Same thing with regulators. Um, another great thing about that is, I want to show you again here as I take this off. You can see kind of the, the corrosion build up there around the housing of the inflator itself. Um, and like I said, I have no doubt that there's going to be corrosion in there as well. But we can look here, and hopefully the camera will focus for you. You can see the corrosion around the O-ring. Uh, we're going to get all that cleaned off for him. But getting back to the mixture, that water and vinegar, is, it's not going to damage anything. Um, it's not going to hurt you if you get it on your skin. And another thing I do is I, I leave just an old toothbrush laid around that I can dip down in that mixture and scrub parts, which I'll do for him as well. But that water and vinegar mixture works very, very well to clean. Some people use simple green and stuff like that, and that, that's okay. Um, I'm just very fond to water and distilled white vinegar. It works perfect, um, and it's not going to hurt you if you don't get it all washed off. If you put something in your mouth, it's not going to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to continue to break this guy down, um, and then I've got a rebuild kit that I'm going to actually rebuild his inflator for him. But when I clean this, I put my mixture in, which is just water and vinegar. I'm going to set the heat. I'm going to turn it to the highest setting, and I'm just going to sit there and let that cook. And that ultrasonic cleaner is going to get in there, and it's going to 
eat all that corrosion away. Usually what I'll do is I'll pull it halfway out or through halfway through the time and I'll scrub it really good with the toothbrush and then put it back in and let it cook again. And when everything is said and done, a lot of times I'll just simply wash it off with fresh clean water and then just dry air from a scuba tank. I'll take my little air nozzle here and just kind of blow it dry really good. And then of course I'll replace O-rings, I'll rebuild the system, uh, put a little bit of silicone or um, crystal lube on it, whatever it calls for, whatever manufacturer calls for. And of course I'll put it back together and test it for the customer as well. But I'm gonna finish getting this cleaned up and I'll kind of walk you through the process of how we rebuild one of these as well. All right guys, so I got this inflator tore apart here and I just wanna show you, this is just a quick disassembly here. Um, there's still more parts that I have to break apart here. Uh, but of course here's the housing, um, the mouthpiece, the inflator button, the exhaust button, um, and it looks like everything's broke down, but a lot of these components, actually there's several O-rings in here, there's two O-rings on the outside, a lot of these components, there's a spring system here, they actually break down even further. So anytime that you're going to be servicing your gear for something like this, please take it into a service technician who's trained, he, he's got the right parts kits to do it with. Um, but as far as cleaning the reg, I will show you towards the end of the video just what you can do to actually clean the reg as well. But I'm going to finish disassembling uh, the inflator here. I'm going to replace the parts that need to be replaced. I'm going to clean what doesn't get replaced or whatnot. And then I'll reassemble everything. And then, like I said, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you exactly what uh, you can be doing to prolong the life of your inflator and how you can clean it without having a big hefty service fee as well. Alright guys, so I've got this thing rebuilt. Now I'm going to test it for the customer. Um, and we always want to test it, of course, before we give it back. Make sure we didn't mess up. Make sure we didn't leave a part out where we shouldn't have or something like that. So I'm just going to simply slide it onto the hose. I'm not going to clamp it down yet because I'm going to take it back apart. And I'm actually going to show you how you can clean it and how you can prolong the life of this uh, without necessarily having to bring it to a service technician all the time. So I'm going to put his little spring on and snap it back into place and I'm going to slide it up in the hose however I'm not going to clamp it down what I'm actually going to do is use the same hose that I use for an air nozzle and I'm going to make sure that everything works make sure there's no leaks make sure everything inflates inflator tends to be working fine it can inflate as BCD I don't hear any leaks one of the things that I do is that you guys have seen my video on the homemade defog basically it's just dish detergent, baby shampoo, and a little bit of water. You can also spray that around as well. It's not gonna hurt anything, and you can look for bubbles and stuff like that. Uh, but everything appears to be working good on here. I don't have any leaks whatsoever. Even when I take the low pressure hose off, that O-ring that uh, we replaced in here and cleaned out, all that sealed. Uh, and I'm gonna show you this too here in just a minute and show you just how much of that corrosion we got off. Um, but everything looks to be good. So now let me tear this apart one more time, or just the outside part, if you will, because I want to show you what you can do to prolong the life of this as well. All right, guys, I've got his inflator disassembled again off of his BC or taken off his BC. And what I'm going to do is take this part right here off. And this is something that you can do at home. Um, one of the issues that... Uh, I see a lot is corrosion on the inside. There's a little spring mechanism in here that allows the power inflator to operate properly. And so we want to kind of keep that nice and greased up. We don't want a lot of salt crystals built up. We don't want corrosion and stuff like that to build up in it. And one of the things that you can do is once you've taken this part of your inflator off, which is very simple, you just take a wrench and loosen it and tighten it. Uh, and I want, do want to make a quick note too. If your inflator is ever leaking, make sure that's tight. Just take your wrench and snug it down, make sure it's tight. Sometimes this O-ring will dislodge. If it's not tight, it'll kind of bulge out and you'll have to replace this O-ring here. But it's a real simple fix. It's something that should be in just about every diver's toolkit or their save-a-dive kit is a couple spare O-rings and a wrench. Um, but get you a little bit of silicone lube here. And all you've got to do 
is I'm just going to get kind of a little glob of it there. You see that little glob right there that I'm using? And I'm going to actually push it down on the inside of this component here and just get it down in there. And you want to just kind of fill it up. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, at the least, it's going to help, of course. But I just want to kind of fill it up like that right there. All right. And then what I'll do is actually reassemble it. I'm going to push it back down in there. And then I'll hook it to um, a low pressure hose one more time and I'll hit the inflator button. What that's going to do, it's going to take that air that's going inside of it and it's just going to push it all through the device itself. It's going to coat it really well. It's going to give it a nice little coating. And I'm just going to do this without it on the BC. Uh, you might want to put your finger over it just to make sure uh, nothing squirts back on you. But I'm just going to push it. And that's going to blow that all through that uh, inflator for you. It's going to keep it nice and lubed up. And then, of course, if it's still a little bit sticky or whatnot, you, you can keep adding a little bit more silicone in it. Uh, but once you got it cleaned out really well, put you a little bit of silicone in there. And like I said, as you can see, it's blew it all out of there. It's all through uh, the inflator. Uh, and you don't want to put too much. You saw about the glob that I had on there. It just kind of took the end of the pick there. You see there's still quite a bit on it. Uh, but you just want to blow it through there. It's going to keep the system nice and lubed up. So your inflator is going to always work. Um, it's not going to get stuck open, anything like that. And, of course, we cleaned it out. We rebuilt it, which is going to be good, too. But, you know, you go about every two years and you rebuild this thing. Um, you could almost get about three years out of it if you clean it out really good. Um after every dive and then of course grease it up really good about once or twice a year but i'm just going to take my wrench and i'm going to tighten it down and when you go to tighten this back down remember this is a plastic housing plastic threads and now you're putting a metal component with metal threads in there all it's got to be is snug remember everything in scuba diving is sealed with an o-ring so it just has to be snug if you go to really he-man that thing down you are going to strip the threads in the plastic so definitely don't do that but now that I've got that, I'm going to reassemble it one more time on the BC, just test it, make sure everything uh, is good to go, and then of course I'll create a bill for the customer and then uh, put him on his way, and that way he can go diving. All right, so I got him finished up, got his inflator back in good working order, uh, got it cleaned out, got it completely rebuilt, and I want to kind of show you the difference here with the corrosion. As you can see, all that corrosion now is gone. Uh, it does strip some of the coating off of it, but that typically happens during the um, cleaning process, depending on how hard you scrub it. Uh, the ultrasonic cleaner will do that as well, but it's still in great working order. The inflator doesn't stick at all anymore, so he should be good to go. Uh, usually what I'll do with customers, I don't ever give their parts back to them, but I will show the customer exactly what we take out of their system, what we replace in their system. So there's the part kits um, that we replaced for him. Um, but I will show that to him. That way he understands that, and, and a lot of divers, unless you're a service technician, please take it to a service technician to get it worked on. A lot of manufacturers will not sell you parts. They'll only sell it to the shops and the service technicians. So please take it to them. They know what they're doing. They are factory trained, just like we are as well. Um, but there are things that you can do that you don't have to bring it to us that will prolong the life and give you a little bit extra life out of it before you have to get it serviced. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll, I'll be happy to discuss things with you as well. Um, if you did like this video, simply hit that like button for me and definitely share it as well. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.